Hi guys and thanks for watching. In this video we're going to talk about how we can change your life. I've been putting together something really special and before the end of this month I'm going to be telling you guys what it is and how you can access this amazing opportunity. But rather than me tell you about how Animal Training Academy can help you and transform your life, why don't we instead ask one of Animal Training Academy's members to share their experiences with you. Before joining uh, Animal Training Academy, Russell was not a tactile bird. Um, and after working with the theories and, and the lessons from Animal Training Academy, now I have an understanding of why Rasta behaves the way he does and how I can work with that. Now instead of telling Rasta to do something, I ask him and I wait for him to say, yes, I'm going to do it or no, I don't want to do it right now. Uh, and that type of empowerment is, is you can't really, you can't pay for something like that, to have that, uh, that open communication with, with an animal. It doesn't only do this with me, but he does it with the rest of the family. And something like that is just, that's something that I'm forever grateful for. It's, it's, it's priceless to me and it's really changed, changed my life and Russ's life. Now, if you guys want to experience results similar to Julian's, then keep watching this video. But first, let me tell you a little bit more about myself. I've been working internationally now for 10 years in America, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand as a professional animal trainer, contributing significantly to a huge variety of different organizations. I'm a bird nerd at heart though, and my career has seen me release hawks out of ferris wheels, falcons out of large helium balloons, and paraglide alongside trained Egyptian vultures. I've worked alongside numerous species, from penguins to tigers, iguanas and eagles, as well as run zoo-wide training programs across whole zoo teams and collections. I've worked alongside pet owners and their animals, presented at international conferences, and have articles published in industry magazines. Over the last 12 months, I've been running my own animal <laughs> training business, which has seen me create a brand new online environment from scratch, offering courses, webinars, podcasts, videos, written reports, and more. And later on this year, I've accepted my first invitation to speak about behavior at a university. It's my goal to disseminate information that empowers animals and their humans and teaches techniques based on positive reinforcement, environmental arrangement, choice, trust, and cooperation. This is why I started Animal Training Academy. The information you will find on my website and in my content is aimed towards helping you achieve this goal. Now one of the biggest questions I get frequently asked about the relevance of my content to individual people's situations is what species I work with or what species you'll see in my content. And the answer is all of them because positive reinforcement works for all species. The techniques and information that you will find on animaltrainingacademy.com are relevant for your species. You just have to be able to generalize. Let's look at three examples. These are station training, target training, and voluntarily placing oneself inside a crate and slash or space where an animal can be transported. We're going to look at the benefits of these three behaviors today across a huge array of species. Firstly, we will start with station training, where our animals place their bodies in a particular location or station in order to earn positive reinforcement. For example, with Molly the Moorpork here, she stations herself on this raised astroturf covered perch. Doing this is firstly incompatible with flying at me when I enter her holding space. She also knows exactly what to do whilst I set up her scales, at which point I use my finger to target her over. This is also demonstrated very well here with Petra the brush-tail possum. You can see that she was exhibiting some rather undesirable behaviours surrounding us entering her holding space. However, using station training, we taught Petra to place herself or station herself somewhere that was incompatible with climbing on the door. This allowed us to safely enter Petra's enclosure without her possibly injuring herself on the door or us tripping over here. You can also see this exhibited with Bob the wedge-tailed eagle here. Sometimes I just station train for fun, although I know when I train a station, it's a foundation behavior, and it will definitely come in handy later. For example, I want Tilo, my cat, to stay in one location whilst I start this training of introducing nail clippers to her. In this next example, station training is utilized in a chain of behaviors with Blaze the parakeet. Part of Blaze's training was stationing him on this small black perch on top of his rubbish bin, which was a part of a full chain of behaviors, which included him placing rubbish in a bin for the purpose of educating zoo visitors. I use station training here station. to be my dog, where I wanted her to stand in proximity to my feet 
which I can use when I am out and about taking Phoebe for walks. And station training is really great when there's more than one animal present in a training situation. And we're going to see this demonstrated now with a few different species. The ideal training situation is always one animal to one trainer, but frequently this can't be achieved. Stations provide our animals with information about what earns reinforcement in these situations. This way we can manage more than one animal at a time. In the next example, with these three cotton top tamarins, we have used location, shapes and colour to provide them with information about where their individual stations are and what earns reinforcement in the current moment. In this last example, with these Himalayan yaks, you can see we are doing some station training with one and target training with the other. Target training is where we teach an animal to touch or place a body part to a particular object or location. This behaviour is another foundational behaviour and has so many different applications. And once again, I will demonstrate this with an array of different and unique species. For example, one of the most common types of targeting you will see is people training their animals to follow a target stick. This is great for us to communicate to our animals where we want them to go, and we match this with high amounts of positive reinforcement. Check out this example of Johnny May at the time working at a Bass Pro Shop in the USA, target training this white sturgeon to voluntarily swim over a stretcher. We'll take Kate Southcombe here, a horse trainer from New Zealand, target training her horse to a chew with medicine in it so that she can administer drugs to this animal in a voluntary fashion. You can see me here learning how the animal training organization Natural Encounters works with their birds in the US and I use my hand to target the animal's attention. Here we target train Rasta the Alexandrian parrot that you heard about earlier in this video towards our hands as Julian and him work towards accepting tactile work around his wing. Here you can see that by targeting, Tilo my cat learns to hold herself still whilst I attach a harness to her. After this and once outside, I then use a target stick to communicate to Tilo where it is I want her to go, and she follows the target stick to voluntarily place herself inside her crate, which is situated inside my car. Allowing our animals to learn that voluntarily placing themselves in places such as crates where we can then move them from location A to location B is another foundational behaviour for me that is beneficial for all species to learn. You can see what voluntarily entering a crate looks like in these next two great examples. So to summarise all of that information, and to answer the question about what species my content is relevant for, is that it works with all of them. As we just saw with 16 completely unique species, and station training, target training, and voluntarily entering into crates or spaces to be transported has universal application. Some people might argue though that this is not true, that it's not applicable to their unique situation. One common comment that I get is that my animal is not motivated. Therefore, I cannot train it. I was having this conversation recently about motivation with Debbie Marin, the Director of Training and Behavioural Husbandry at San Francisco Zoo. And you can listen to that conversation in the free podcast section on the website. And how Debbie answered the question of how to train an unmotivated animal, and additionally how the content on animaltrainingacademy.com can help you out, is by assisting you in developing a fundamental deep understanding of motivation and reinforcement. You really have to understand your individual animal and set its environment up for it to succeed. You need to understand all the reinforcers on offer for the individual animal and how and when they are available throughout its daily routine. Are there food reinforcers, opportunities to play, tactile reinforcement, access to space, sights, smells, access to other individuals? The list can be endless. And the bigger the variety of reinforcers that you have to offer your animals that you're managing, controlling, and making available, the better you're going to be able to motivate your animals. In a couple of days, I'm going to release another video. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about a three-step process that you guys can go through to really supercharge where you are at with your animal training. It's simple, straightforward, and anyone can implement it. You don't want to miss out. 
However, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope you're excited about what I've got coming up for you for Animal Training Academy's first ever birthday. I can't wait to share it in the coming week or two. I would love to hear your thoughts, feelings, and questions. So please leave a comment wherever you are watching this, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, on my website, wherever you are. Tell me if you liked the video. Tell me if you didn't like the video. It doesn't matter. I just want to hear from you. I'm looking forward to it and you'll hear from me again soon.